uh, today we will talk about how approach for safe anesthesia, how to give a safe anesthesia. And we will apply this approach or steps on a case in the form of case presentation for high risk patient uh, for high risk surgery in order to know how to get our patient safe pre, intra and post operative. First, we have to change the definition of anesthesia. As we all know that anesthesia is a Greek word mean without pain. Traditionally, our goal were to achieve amnesia, analgesia and muscle relaxation. We have to know that muscle relaxation and amnesia are desirable, yes, but not mandatory for general anesthesia. More recently, the anesthesia should be considered the art of reflex management. Our aim for general anesthesia is narcosis and reflex depression. And we have to know that reflex depression has nothing to do with consciousness. Reflexes to be depressed, such as motor reflexes as movement cuffing, Autonomic reflexes such as cardiovascular as blood pressure and heart rate changes, neuroendocrine reflexes such as cortisol and vasopressin level. To be an anesthesiologist, this is not an easy thing. Anesthesia one of the highest risk specialty among, among other medical or if we compare it with other medical specialties. Our role are not confined to the intraoperative room only. We are very operative physicians. We are pain physicians, palliative care provider. Our, room, our role extends to emergency department, ICU care unit, trauma unit, even to evidence-based practice of some very operative issues. So to give safe anesthesia, this leads to safe surgery and safe patient. And patient safety starts with me. Everyone should tell himself, I should be better today than I was yesterday. You have to do all your effort and your best to be able to tell your patient, don't worry, you are in a safe hands. Okay, so to do this, you have to prepare well. Read the note. Don't rush. Please don't rush. Pay attention to every details in patient file. Take careful, take history, examination, investigation. Assess your patient personally. Check airway allergies. Check drug and apparatus. To achieve drug safety, you have to achieve the six rights. To give the right patient the right medication at the right time by the right to, uh, route, by the right dose correctly applied. Don't handle more than one drug at a time. Double check is very important with a person or even with a device if existed as barcode, if existed. Label your syringe first and then match the label on the syringe with the label on the ampoule before withdrawing your drug. Please put your medication in order. Make it tidy and neat. Don't, don't make mess. Mess promote mistakes. If you are in trouble, ask for help. Asking for help, this is not an inferiority. This is colleague respect. You seek for their advice. Don't panic. Always remember. ABC, airway, breathing, circulation. Always have plan P, never assume. Our main rule should be, if you can do good, do no harm. Never leave your anesthetized patient unattended. When ventilating, check the chest is moving. Hypotension need explanation. If failed intubation, don't panic. Ventilate and oxygenate. Your patient will not die from failed intubation. He will die from failed oxygenation and failed ventilation. If in doubt that your endotracheal is, is in, just take it out. You have to know that the anesthetist and surgeon are not enemies. We are on the same team. The concept of safety will never be achieved except if all team members support each other and communicate with each other in a proper way, in a proper way. That's why WHO make a surgical safety checklist to, to give the correct patient the correct surgeon. These are framework specially designed to achieve the concept of saf safety and to decrease the mortality and complication from surgery. These are three main items, which is sign in, time out, and sign out. Sign in before induction of anesthesia. At least one anesthetist and nurse and the patient actively involved in this step. 
patient has confirmed by using identity site of the operation procedure to be done and consent been taken. Site of the operation should be marked and anesthesia safety check should be completed as regard patient monitoring, at least the least effective monitoring should be functioning and on. At least pulse oximeter should be functioning and on the patient. Does patient have any allergies, any suspect of difficulty of airway or risk of aspiration? If yes, equipment should be available and at least one qualified assistant should be available. If there is anticipated blood loss more than five, 100 milliliter in adult or more than seven milliliter per kilogram in children. Ad adequate intravenous access should be available and all fluid blend should be available. What about time out? Time out before induction of anesthesia. All team members should confirm themselves by name and role. Surgeon, anesthesia professional and nurse actively confirm patient and this is the last patient confirmation. Confirm patient the side of the operation and the procedure to be done. Any anticipated critical event should be reviewed and discussed. Surgeon review what are the critical or unexpected steps of the surgery. What about the duration of surgery? Any anticipated blood loss? All this should be discussed before skin incision. Anesthesia team review, are there any patient specific concern? For example, if we are anesthetizing a cardiac patient for, for laparoscopic surgery, uh, pneumoprotonium will affect hemodynamic and affect the cardiac condition. So I should discuss with the surgery that uh, with the surgeon that I may deflate the abdomen or temporarily deflate the abdomen for a while if it affects uh, patient hemodynamic or may cancel the laparoscopic technique into open technique if it affects hemodynamic. All this should be discussed. Nursing team review has a sterility been confirmed. Are there any equipment issue to be fulfilled? Has antibiotic prophylaxis been given within the last 60 minutes? If I need for essential imaging, intraoperative sh should be functioning. It's not logic to anesthetize the patient then found the ultrasound or, or the CR not functioning. What about sign out? Sign out before patient leaving the operating room. Nurse verbally confirm with the team the name of the procedure, the, that instrument, sponge, and needle count are correct. If any specimen taken from the patient should be labeled, including the patient name, whether there are any equipment issue to be addressed. Surgeon, anesthesia professional, and nurse review the key concern of patient recovery. What after operation, your patient will go directly to the ward or to the ICU. What about first oral intake? What about anticoagulation? What about medication? What about uh, positioning? All this should be discussed before patient leaving the operating room. This framework are designed not to be comprehensive. Addition and modification could be done to fit the local area practice. So let's now apply all these safety approach on case discussion. Our 